Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the Idahoan Show. I wanted to do a follow-up test uh, to the one I did on muzzleloader sabots. So I printed up some more of these with a slightly larger diameter, so they should have a little bit tighter fit to the bore, just to see if that gives us better accuracy. Today I started with a 40 grain powder charge and we get a nice tight group and nice round holes. But these are clearly 50 caliber holes, not 38 caliber holes. So with these very light powder charges, what seems to be happening is that the sabot is not discarding. It's acting as a non-discarding sabot uh, and it's contributing perhaps to the stability and accuracy of the bullet at those low velocities. Uh, so 40, with 40 grains, we've got a very light load that is pretty accurate. Uh, if I increase that even to 50, in this case, we start losing stability. Uh, and then uh, same thing with 100 grains, about the same as last time we got a lot of bullets keyholing. Uh, so at 100 grains, clearly the sabots are discarding, but the bullets are not stabilizing. And then Today I increased it to 140 and 160 and was still getting kind of the same results as 100 grains where, you know, the bullets are keyholing, they're tumbling. Uh, I had to go all the way up to 200 to get them to stabilize. Uh, and even then the accuracy was uh, questionable. Well, this was an interesting test, uh, and I think in principle these sabots have the potential to be a very versatile uh, round for muzzle loaders because they can function both as a non discarding sabot at low velocities and also as a discarding sabot at higher velocities. Now, in practice, the low velocity application seems to work fine, provided you're okay with shooting a light load. You don't need something hotter for something like big game hunting. Uh, the high velocity application is more questionable because, at least in this case, I was having to use an impractically large powder charge. You know, with 200 grains of powder, the recoil was definitely pretty stout, even to the point of starting to get a little uncomfortable. And when that much powder burns in the barrel, it generates a lot of fouling uh, that, in this case, was clogging up the nipple. And so then on the next shot, I was getting, you know, caps going off and failing to set off the powder charge and I was having to repeatedly clean out the nipple. And so uh, the, the high velocity application may not be terribly practical in this muzzle loader. Uh, maybe if I had a muzzle loader of a different design, either with a faster twist rifling in the barrel or other design features that make it better suited to really hot loads, uh, maybe they would work better. I'm not sure when or if I'll get around to experimenting with that, but I probably will post the Sabot STL file on my website uh, in case anyone else wants to experiment with it in the meantime. Uh, anyway, until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.